And welcome to our rector, Mr. Mark Beaumont. Thank you, Brian. And um, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. I realize that I've got the tough act because I stand between uh, some of you and hearing who's won. Um, hopefully, it will be interesting and engaging and relevant because um, none of you are going to set out from here and pedal around the world. So my task is not just to be interesting, but to, be, to, to, to make the thoughts that I have over the last decade uh, relevant uh, to what you do, regardless of what you do. As I heard the, the latter stages of the, the pitches this afternoon, and uh, what you have to stay in, in, in common is the passion behind the purpose. Every single person who I saw standing here um, has an absolute belief in what they do. You can see that fire in the belly. You can see that real excitement about the journey they're on. And that, for me, is at the heart of entrepreneurship. I'm a decade out of graduating myself with an economics and politics degree, and I um, plan to work in financial services. But I thought, well, hang on, before I do that, why don't I go on one daft adventure to end all adventures? Because I'd spent my teenage years uh, taking on some, uh, some pretty um, interesting challenges. And that, done well, ended up being a BBC documentary, a book deal, and doors started to open. And I would say that my career so far is a fine balance between stuff which I've originated ideas which I've had and turned from dreams into realities, and opportunities that have come my way because I'm out there building a profile, building a track record, and um, ultimately for me, entrepreneurship is, is the ability on a personal level to end up being paid for who you are rather than what just, you, uh, just what you do. Now that in simple terms is growing above and beyond your technical ability. Because this life is full of people who are brilliantly educated and very good at the nuts and bolts of what they do. Entrepreneurship is actually growing beyond that. It's, uh, if you're actually utterly replaceable if you're just technically good at your job. But if you've got a network, a confidence, a skill set, an experience, that's what sets you apart. An ability to see things differently, think differently, and the hardest part, act differently when you have these ideas. Because it's far simpler and far safer just to do the same. So I want to sort of um, give some real life experiences to those rather abstract business talk um, statements. Um, but before I did that, I thought I would um, uh, celebrate the successes that Brian and his team and many other people are having in the university right here with the new Center of Entrepreneurship. Um, absolutely fantastic with everything else which is going on uh, in Dundee and, and, and the area to see the partnership between the University of Dundee and um, Elevator. Now, the plans are in place, the build is happening, the fit out is happening, and you'll hopefully, hopefully see the fruits of all that hard work um, when students and staff come back after the summer holidays, because there's a, a lot to be celebrated. Now, Dundee's going through a complete sort of de uh, design-led um, sort of evolution at the moment, and the, the new center is, is very much taking inspiration from that, but also understanding that uh, entrepreneurs and uh, entrepreneurship needs a, needs a creative heart. It needs a space where you can't just, it's not just about you know, meeting people and sharing skill sets, but it also, um, it also really works as a, as, a, as, a, as a positive space. The drawings, the designs, the reality which many of you will, will, will work in, and the fact that this will have a complete open door policy, not just for those working in the university, but from people across the city and beyond. Um, with a, real, with a real view to, to accelerating um, ideas, new starts, SMEs, taking them to the next level, taking them national, global. Um, amazing to see, and as, as, as the director of this um, great university, uh, I'm just proud to be associated with such fine work. Because my passion and the reason that I decided to become uh, a director here was because whilst I think a great education is a great thing, I think a great education is nothing if it's not married with personal choice. Uh, so there's no point in going through, people worry about people dropping out the education system. My sister's an educational psychologist and she spends her life worrying about people who, who struggle in education. I worry equally about the opposite. I worry equally about people who get fast tracked through high school, university, do well, come out with a degree like many others and don't actually have the confidence or the time to pause and think about what they're going to do with that great toolkit in life. That's the reason I'm passionate about 
um, whenever I can working with young people to encourage them to stop and think about what they want to do with this life because ultimately that's what's going to keep the fire in your belly. Entrepreneurship can be working for the world's largest corporation. Entrepreneurship can be playing your own furrow. Entrepreneurship's an attitude. It's not the fact that you've gone out and uh, worked for yourself your, ent your entire life. So fantastic to see such great work. And I thought for the next um, for the next bit, I would um, before we let the judges back in, I would share share some of the lessons and um, successes, but also failures <laughs> from the last decade. Um, I'm still very much on that journey. There's no point in standing here and say, you know, I did it, I went, I succeeded. It's the honest truth of the ambitions I've set over the last decade is I've failed at about a third of them. Now, um, whilst failure is never a fun thing at the time, um, th what you can take from it is um, the reality that success is a lousy teacher. And what I mean by that is, um, whilst you don't enjoy the setbacks along the way, they're actually, the, they're actually the projects and the moments which um, allow you to stop and reassess your priorities. Properly figure out where you're going next and why you're doing it. When you have a success, that's good for your career and sometimes for your bank balance. But um, they don't often allow that same um, perspective on what's important and what you're going to then go and, and do next. Um, to take you back 10 years, and this, this, this is very much at the heart of entrepreneurship for me, um, I saw an opportunity. I saw something that hadn't been done before. This red line around the planet was my first wee adventure after graduating. I um, I'd pedaled John O'Groats Land's End as a 15-year-old. I'd pedaled the length of Europe. I'd done all these adventures. And... Um, I left university thinking, well, I could go and do my CA and, and become an accountant straight away, or we could go on one big adventure to end all adventures. Now, if you've only got one chance to do something, go as big as you can dream, because then you'll never regret it. If you're ever wondering in life if you're doing the right thing, have a conversation with your 70-year-old self. That study that came out recently, it was in the BBC in a big way, uh, talking, interviewing people in their 80s and 90s about life and their regrets. The overriding result of that was not people regretting things they'd done. The overriding outcome was people regretting things they hadn't done. Uh, it's the hardest thing when you're under financial pressure, peer pressure, all the other pressures that come with the busy lives we lead. But I left university a decade ago and I thought, let's just cycle around the world. Now, I didn't think the world record was within my means. I thought I can just bumble my way around the planet, come back and become an accountant. I then found out to my amazement through researching that only five people had ever gone for the record, and the record stood at 276 days to get around planet Earth, an 18,000 mile route. Now, slightly naively, having never pedaled outside of Europe, I looked at that and I thought, surely you can go a lot faster than that. <laughs> now, I don't wish to be disparaging about anyone who's gone 18,000 miles, but I saw an opportunity here. I thought, why have the last three people come home within a couple of weeks of each other? Why are they pipping each other's records? And I looked at this and I thought, right, What's my sum? And I, I thought, well, surely I can go 100 miles a day, 100 miles a day for 18,000 miles. Let's allow a day off a fortnight for flights and in, any, any issues, and that adds up to 195 days. Old world record 276, my target 195. Now you try and go out and sell a world record by a margin of two months with no track record, no profile, never having been professionally trained. Human nature is that if you go out and say to somebody, um, I'm going to do a wee bit better than last year, or I'm going to do a wee bit better than next best, whatever competition is. People believe you. That's just, you know, the glass, the glass is half full. That's just a bit of human confidence. People get that because they've got a point of reference. What people are not good at is creating leaps in performance because there's no, there's no way to sort of actually um, to, to, to sort of give that a point of relevance. Um, the reality is, I've lived in my shoes for 20 years, pushing the, the, these ambitions as a bike rider. So I was 12 years old when I pedaled across Scotland. Um, I should have an ability to set my targets, um, to have this sort of uh, this comfort zone, this ability uh, that, that that nobody else does. If you've been truly ambitious in your career for 20 years, I should not be able to step in your shoes and take the decisions that you do. But what that means is, the longer you live in your shoes and the more ambitious you are, the harder it is to get other people to buy into those ambitions. Because it's hard to see 
just the way you see the world and the way you set your targets, especially if those targets are a considerable leap from anything that's gone before. If it's a wee bit better, people will buy into it. But no man, no lady is an island. And the reality of cycling around the world or setting up any of the businesses that you've heard today are the easy bit is the bit you're good at. The technical ability to ride your bike or row oceans or climb mountains and do the stuff that I do, lots and lots and lots of people can do that. I get emailed every single day from people with great ambitions or hear about them on social media and it's fantastic. But I know, having been in this game for long enough, that very, very few of them will see them through to the start line, let alone actually on the road. Most people are good at what they say they can do. But the ability to get your team around you, the finance around you, the media around you, that is the tough bit. And we all know it if we've ever tried to take on one of these um, great ambitions. Um, now, to cut a story short, I got back around the planet in 194 days and 17 hours. Now, the front page story, the news was all about the 82 days and the margin and the first sub 200 day circumnavigation. I went 18,294 miles within eight hours of what I planned to. Now, at the time, fantastic, good job, you've launched a career, you've done, done, done what you said you'd do. Um, with a bit of perspective, you have to say, it's a bit neat, isn't it? It's a bit neat. The reality is you never do better than what you set out to do. So you've got to be pretty clear day one what you're trying to do. If all you're trying to do is beat next best, you might just do that. But if you're actually trying to address your potential, what you think is possible, you have to be pretty determined to figure out that, what that is. And then you need to be very, even more determined during the process not to constantly look over your shoulder and slip back to whatever next best is. There was challenges along the way. Armed guards, um, trying to cycle 100 miles a day through India, <laughs> trying to cycle across Australia for 3,000 miles with a cracking headwind. But this was a moment in time in Louisiana which, which really threatened the whole project. At lunchtime on day one in the deep south, I got hit by a car and run, well, run over, I broke the windscreen. That evening, trying to get things fixed, I was in the city of Lafayette and I was in the wrong part of town and I was attacked by a gang and, and mugged. So you get run over at lunchtime and mugged in the evening, it's not a good day. Um, now, two things happened really off the back of that. Um, First of all, never ever go looking for this, but a bit of bad news before your final success can be quite a good thing. Light and shade, human stories, are all about putting across what's important and not just always saying it's easy when it's not. My point is, this was a serious setback, a serious challenge. It felt like an utter disaster, but what it also did was made it a front page story for the final two weeks. It took it from being told by the Dundee Courier uh, to something which was uh, a, a national story and made the, the final record and the finish in Paris a much bigger story than it ever would have been. So I always encourage people, individually and as businesses, be honest about challenges, be honest about when things go wrong. Um, because sometimes it can really accentuate the successes you have as well. You know, don't just always pretend it's uh, success after success. Um, the, other, the other reality and the lesson off the back of this is, is quite simple. Um, my team, my own team back in Scotland, phoned me up and said, Mark, we just want to make sure you can finish this. But don't worry about the record because you're still two, two months. Somebody even said you could take a month off and chill on the beaches of Florida and still break this record. And I realized that even my own team was looking over their shoulders and going, well, next best is two months away, so we've done this already. You can't do that. You're addressing your potential. You're trying to figure out what you can do, and you've got to stick to that determinedly, even when there's trip points along the way. And that's how you get back around the world within eight hours of what you said you would. But 10 years later, let's be honest about this, 100 miles a day for half a year, that's pedestrian. That's really <laughs> slow. Nobody, guys or girls, in ultra endurance is going 100 miles a day. So that's only significant because of a moment in time when I did it. And I think it's really important to say because, you know, bikes aren't any better than they were 10 years ago in any real terms. Physically, are we any more capable than we were a decade ago? I think the, the leap in performance has nothing to do with these marginal gains. We just believe we can do, we can go so much quicker and do so much more. Um, 
in the last few moments, I just wanted to take you to a few other places and, and reflect on, on, um, on some, of the team, some of the teams and setbacks, because as I say, it's, it's not always a, a glorious success. Um, this was an ocean rowing journey 800 miles north of the Arctic Circle. Now, a real bittersweet success. You shouldn't be able to take a rowing boat 800 miles north of the Arctic Circle. It was really tough for us, but now, four years on, I reckon you could sail up there every summer holidays. Um, but the point was, I wasn't the leader on this team. I wasn't the guy calling the shots. I was there as the broadcaster for the BBC. So there was often a situation which is not the decision I would make. We were genuinely putting our life on our lines, navigating some of these ice fields. This one took us 37 hours to get the boat through. And I think it's really interesting to reflect in teams in leadership. When it's your decision, when you're the, the leader, you can't fall out with yourself too badly for too long. It's your call. The real test amongst the team is if decisions are made which are not the ones you would make, can you still be as productive, as clear thinking? Can you, can you not be a break on progress? Can you actually make sure that despite your maybe inexperience or insecurity, uh, based on the, 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 the decided course of action, that you're still going to contribute, you're still going to be a, a, big, a big player? When those insecurities are around your life, it's a massive test about what you, what you communicate. Otherwise, it just becomes a distraction. It becomes noise. It becomes uh, a break on progress. This is a very British endeavor. There's only about 500 people in the world who have ever rowed an ocean, and about 350 of them are British. We should take confidence from this. We live in a small island, but we're tenacious. We've got a good track record of doing things which others have not done. A time when things went properly wrong was um, trying to break the mid-Atlantic world record. And I want to reflect on this because this is, for me, the marked difference between a technical ability and personal accountability. And that's what you need with any type of entrepreneurship. I was 28 days in to rowing this boat, an 11-meter ocean rowing vessel across the Atlantic with there was six top flight rowers. These guys were phenomenal. I was one of the least experienced guys on board. I'd done more expeditions than them, but these guys could make a boat go fast. And we were going Tarfe, Morocco to Port St. Charles, Barbados. 28 days in, we got smashed by a big wave and capsized. Until that point, we were on par for the world record, and everyone was utterly determined, rowing two hours on, two hours off, two hours on, two hours off. Can you imagine that? 12 hours a day on the oars, never sleeping for more than 90 minutes. Day 28, 500 miles from the finish, and we capsized, and we're in a fight for our lives. When we eventually got the life raft out, we tethered ourselves on a 50-meter line so that the riggers wouldn't puncture the life raft. And we sat on board that life raft, and all six of us had a very rational conversation. We'd been through the training. We knew what to do. Then there was a very simple question. Who's going to get back into the water, swim back over 50 meters in high seas, dive underneath, into those flooded cabins and retrieve the kit that we needed, satellite phone, VHF radio, flares, all this kit. Only two of the six ever left the life raft. Four of the six couldn't have saved their own lives. Now, it begs the question, if two hadn't, would have the four stepped up? We'll never know. But my point is, we'd all been through the same training. We all knew what to do. These were six phenomenal athletes. They were technically up for the job. But at their heart of hearts, there was an assumption with four out of six that in the heat of battle, when things go wrong, somebody else would pick up the slack. Somebody else would get them out of the there was, it's, it's that fundamental assumption. Am I out until I'm given a good reason to be in? Or am I in unless I've got a very good reason to be out? And I think entrepreneurs are the latter. Entrepreneurs are in the game. Entrepreneurs are people who never assume that somebody else is going to do the hard graft. They've got that wry smile. It's what I call type two fun. And it's not the stuff you go looking for. It can be pretty miserable at the time, but it's what becomes life affirming and uh, yeah, certainly career defining. Do you know what I mean by that? You know, anyone can do the type one fun. Anyone can do the stuff we're trained for. But the reality of life, professionally and personally, is the hard miles become your fondest memories. And the more you push yourself, and as I say, you don't go looking for these points in time. But when you sit in the pub having a pint, that's type one fun. But when you're in the pub having your pint, you're talking about type two fun. You're talking about those things that tested you. Um, I wouldn't wish anyone to capsize 500 miles offshore, but it really defined who I am now. 
That's a rubbish photo for you. It's taken at one o'clock in the morning by a Taiwanese vessel, vessel that reached us. The first time I swam underneath, you've got to imagine, I'm in boxer shorts and a t-shirt, diving underneath a boat, trying to salvage the kit, and I just reached in, opened your eyes in salt water, and the first thing I put my hand on, the fire extinguisher, which wasn't so helpful. But this was, this was a photograph taken for their insurance purposes, and um, the final rescue in the middle of the night. What I've tried to share over the last, these guys who saved their lives, but what I've tried to share over the last sort of 20, 25 minutes is the fact that, yeah, I'm a, I'm a bike rider, I'm, a, I'm an athlete, and I've gone out there over the last decade and pushed lots of um, firsts and fastests. You know, that's what, that's what, my, what my public profile is. Um, but, but at the heart of what I do is this absolute obsession about creating leaps in performance. It's about trying to figure out what I think is possible, not just for me, but for the teams I work in. Um, this was the last world record, which was, uh, which was, which was Cairo to Cape Town. And um, I thought I'd show you that photograph, because if you look at any press coverage in, in the Africa world record, they talk about the 200 plus mile days, the days I was smashing it, the big headlines, the big numbers. Through Ethiopia with the broken roads, while well, I had food poisoning and I had a week with uh, down to about 80 miles a day pushing the bike for long, long stages. That's what defined the success of the whole project, but it's not how other people see the success. It's not how the journalists write it up. They just talk about the good days. Um, so the technical side of what I do, the journeys in what I do will be um, hopefully interesting, but irrelevant in real terms to, to, to what you do. But as a celebration for sort of that entrepreneurial spirit, hopefully, um, Hopefully my thoughts are, a, are an appropriate way to, to wrap up what I know has been an inspiring day of, of, of pitches and um, celebrating what, looking forwards with the new Centre for Entrepreneurship in Dundee is going to be an incredible incubator for, for, for talent, ideas and making sure that people have the network to, to take these dreams and make them very quickly into realities. So thank you very much. <laughs>